Brazil either. David Ortiz, I think, really did not do himself proud talking about Mike Fires. Mike Fires is the whistleblower who gave the interview to Ken Rosenthal and Evan Drylick of The Athletic that started this whole Houston Astros sign-stealing scandal. Uh, this is what Ortiz said to Ortiz in Red Sox camp, wearing a Red Sox uniform with a Red Sox backdrop behind him. And this is what he said about Mike Fires. I'm mad at uh, uh, this guy, the pitcher that came out talking about it. And let me tell you why. Oh, after you make your money, after you get your ring, you decide to talk about it? Why don't you talk about it during the season when it was going on? Why, why, why you didn't say, I don't want to be no part of Oh, now. So you look like a snitch. You know what I mean? Why you got to talk about it after? Why you, that's, that's my problem, you know. Why, why nobody say anything while it was going on? Well, first off, David, nobody said a word. Nobody did. Second of all, they continued to do it. Mike Fires is another, another team in that division that's competing with the team that's cheating. He should allow them to continue to do it. So you're making the whistleblower out to be the guilty party here. Uh, da David, whether or not you want to uh, admit that you did PEDs, although you were on the list and you say you didn't, whatever the case may be, I'll believe you. But there are a lot of people doing PEDs during that time. Did you say a word? So well, who's, a, be who's a better I, person, though? I guess the, the guy who finally came out and said it, even if it took a while to find religion, or the guy who kept everything quiet and forced other players to take PDs to be on a level well, playing ground? I agree with you. He shouldn't say anything. But the, I, I think the reason the analogy is faulty on, on your part, Michael, is that it's not like Ortiz started spilling his guts after he left the Red Sox. No, I He never spoke ever no, about I, anybody I understand, PEDs. but by his silence, his silence... Other guys were forced to do PDs right. to be on equal No, ground. I understand that. But Mike Fires, if he stayed on the Astros, maybe he never says a word. And, and but he, he wanted doesn't. the Astros to stop because he's now an opponent. But I think his problem is not that he didn't say anything. Why is he saying something now? If he, if he wanted to be chirpy, why wasn't he chirpy then? Because I, no one was chirpy. I, no, not I, even I, Brian McCann, who supposedly didn't want to but, do it. But, Nobody was chirpy. But right. now he's facing that team. Well, I guess what David Ortiz is saying is if you couldn't say anything then, you shouldn't say anything now. But he's wrong because he wasn't facing I, the team now. No, I, I, uh, but I fundamentally agree with you. But obviously David Ortiz disagrees with you. He thinks that if you're going to keep your mouth shut, not say anything while you're benefiting from it, that you should just keep your mouth shut. But there were good Period. men in that clubhouse that didn't say but a word. I think AJ Hinch is a good guy. He let it well, go on. Well, here's my angle is that why would Fires have any leg to stand on to stop it? If McCann couldn't stop it, right. if the manager couldn't stop it, how do we know Fires didn't try to say something and was shot down? So that's where David Ortiz is wrong. Fire silence might have been necessary just to be able to stay in that clubhouse. He wasn't a superstar by any stretch of the imagination. And if McCann couldn't stop it, who was a veteran, if A.J. Hinch couldn't stop it, who was, the, who was the manager of the team that actually went to the lengths of breaking the monitors because he was so powerless to stop it, then how did Fires have any chance to say anything and, about and, it? And what